All right, now, everybody. Quiet, listen to me. We're going to start a show. Now, some of you people have been with me before. You know it's going to be a tough grind. But we're going to have a show. And hello all across the universe of the web. It is our big show for Friday. Wow. Yeah. Following that uh, fiery State of the Union, the old Prez was on fire. Taking incoming shots from the crowd, everybody. It was nasty. I mean, what happened to a little decorum? They don't have it anymore in uh, Washington. It has left the building. Albert is here. Albert, thank you. Kim is sort of here. She's running another show. She's going to join us from her car, phone, sort of. Kim, how are you? And uh, we're excited, however she gets here, that um, that she gets here. I want to welcome everyone who has posted Bond today, everybody. Have you posted Bond in a defamation case? Yes, uh, Donald Trump, 91 mil, he posted it. Yeah. So uh, it's pretty exciting in Trump land. There's never been anything like this. I think it is uh, pretty awesome when the when the big guy uh, posts the big money. I did everything right and they indicted me. I have nuptials for Rupert Murdoch today. Are you kidding me? You crazy kids. He's 92 and he's still in love. Oh, I'm loving it. Well, Isn't that there's, beautiful, Mark? It is. Yeah, and Albert is... It is so lovely, you know, when two crazy, nutty, free spirits, if I can use that term, find themselves and then decide to essentially memorialize finding themselves in a nuptial ceremony. And that's exactly what is going to happen. Kim did it. She married David. Yep. And it's all working out. They've got kids and everything. Right. Maybe Mr. Murdoch and his new girlfriend, fiance, they'll have kids. Let's Hey, wasn't play. he just engaged to some different lady last year? Technicalities. They're done. <laughs> oh. Yeah, okay. they're Splitsville. So he is uh single and ready to mingle. And he <laughs> mingled with uh Elena. Zakova, let's uh, let's learn about Mr. Murdoch and his new fiance. He is 92. She is Elena Zakova, 67. She's a retired molecular biologist. And what? Yes. She's no slouch. The nuptials are scheduled for June of this year. What a romantic journey it has been for Murdoch to his fifth marriage. What? Yes. You'll remember he was just divorced from Jerry Hall, the model and ex-wife of Mick Jagger in the summer of 2022. He was out there and he was lonely. And as Kim noted, he became engaged to Ann Leslie Smith, who was a retired dental hygienist, in the spring of last year. He broke it off suddenly after about two weeks. He met Ms. Akova through his third wife, Wendy, and we wish them the very best. The molecular biologist has distinguished herself studying diabetes at UC Los Angeles. But she also has an intriguing pedigree, according to the New York Times. She came here from Moscow. Toward the end of the Soviet Union, her ex-husband, Alexander Zukov, became a billionaire energy investor, now resides in London. It's a crazy hookup. I hope they hatch this deal soon and it stays together. Yeah, how about that? The Murdochs and a wonderful future for the two of them. The Mark Thompson no. Show. Mm, yes, yes, I mean, yes. Every flavor of yes. He's 92 years old. The question is this. Why does he feel he needs to marry everyone? Like, can't you just say, listen, I'll give you a cool mill to hang out with me till I croak. Now, when you put it that way, I don't know if there are any cards that say that. The um, <laughs> croak is not often seen in those uh, 
Hallmark cards. No. I, I think that there may be an implicit understanding that they're going to be together until, well, aren't you going to be with David until you croak? Yeah, I mean, but it's, he's not giving me any money to do it. It's death do you part, right? That's the yeah. way marriages work. That's the big uh, hope. I, <laughs> I am, <laughs> I am excited for any new love, Kim. And it's a shame that you can't take your cynical hat off for a moment and understand that these two crazy kids are trying to shape a life together. He's 92. He, He's going to die soon. Oh. No offense. I hate it he when you talk to, like, like that. He died doing what he loved, like literally loving Kim. Yeah. You know? Thank he you, has Albert. Some time left. Yes, Albert gets it. Albert, there's thank enough, you. You just don't get it. I have to there's say, Kim, I'm really left. surprised. You just don't get it. Really. You don't. I you mean, don't. you don't get the romance. You know, you're not in your 90s yet. I hope you make it to your 90s and you have a wonderful life into the past 100. But when you get to your 90s, it's very possible, Kim, that you too will find another surge of romance. You may yeah. even take another partner by then. I don't know what's going to happen. But my point is, you don't want to be called out of the lineup, out of the romantic lineup, just because you're 92. No. So, no. and that's going to be a hell of a wedding. He's got a couple of dollars to throw at the wedding, is all I'm saying. So, don't you think by the time you're 92, you just want people to leave you the hell alone? I want people to leave me the hell alone now. So right. I think you're right. You see what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, but I mean, he's clearly not that way. Man. Yeah, I want to be living the life in the Florida, Kim, in the villages. Yeah. In the villages, all right. <laughs> With my friends when I'm Albert, 90. It's all of us hanging out. I can out, see this about you. Yes. Getting on, being on the news. Usually, the wedding, and I, you'll, I know I'm going to get blowback for saying this, but usually the wedding is a concession to the woman. I mean, in I mean, very few guys I know can't wait to plan a wedding. I mean, it is utterly a pain in the ass. It, there are all these details that you don't care about. Guys are more, hey, give me the date I need to show up and what time I need to be there, and I'll be there. And you want to plan the tablecloths, the centerpieces, the seat cushions? You can do that. But do I need to be part of that? And then it just is oftentimes... Um, they say, if you can survive the planning of a wedding, you can survive mm. the marriage. That's oftentimes said. So This has to be a financial arrangement. This has to be like a, you know, if you, if you manage to stay in this marriage a certain number of years or a certain amount of time, you'll get X amount of dollars. That has to be what it is. That is so cynical and so awful. It, um, wow. I, can't, I don't feel uh, bad about it either. I get well, what does that say about me? I know. I mean, you, mm. you, again, you don't, you don't like, uh, look, there are a lot of reasons <laughs> not to, <laughs> not to like Rupert Murdoch. I mean, you can say he is a, you know, a wealthy media mogul who gained American citizenship simply so he could dominate media. His media organizations have spread patent lies and they still do spread these lies. He's yeah. helped to undercut democracy and any sense of understanding what's really going on in government in service of those lies. You can say all those things, but the one thing you can't say is that somehow he's made some backroom deal with his new fiance. I believe it is pure romance, my friends, and I congratulate those two. And I won't I hear of anything else on this show. The Mark Thompson. Don't Never make me yellow like card. This. Don't don't make me yellow card you, Kim. <laughs> Now, are you, you going to block me from the chat? I, I'm i thinking about me, it. Are you going to put me in timeout, Daddy? You know what? I might. Just keep pushing it and keep <laughs> mocking me the way you do. Look at it. Now she's a little more attitude now that she's just kind of oh, yeah. phoning in like a caller from uh, Danville. She's, uh, <laughs> yes, Kim from Danville, you're on the air. Yeah, Mark. I don't, don't you think there was some kind of an arrangement? <laughs> it's outrageous. Can't believe it, Albert. This really is Kim from Petaluma, it. and I really don't like what I'm hearing on the show today. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that is. There's never been anything like this. She's truly got a little bit of a, an attitude. Yes, I, I'm very unhappy with everything <laughs> I've heard today on your show. Thank you. It's our Friday show, Friday Fabulous Florida. Yeah, it's uh, something the kids love, and we will do it bottom of the hour. The curator of Friday Fabulous Florida is Albert. I do want to get to a couple of. Stories in the second hour, we bring on Michael Shore, and Michael Shore talks about the 
uh, State of the Union, which was, I thought, so impressive. I mean, especially when you kind of begin to take in all of this talk about how Biden, you know, doesn't know his name, doesn't know where he is, can't find the bathroom, can't put three thoughts together. Oh, my God, he's got to pull out. We've got to get another candidate in there. He was no. he delivered a fiery speech. He was able to handle a lot of, as I say, the kind of the heckling, which is outrageous. And we've got to get Washington back to some sense of civility. It is outrageous. I don't care. Even with Trump, I don't care who the president is. You can't be yelling crap at him during the speech. It's just not cool, you know. But he Mark Thompson them. He Mark Thompson them, right? I mean, he he turned around and gave it right back. He's he like, was, oh, you don't like the truth, huh? You have facts are bothering you? Yeah. Yeah, he was very good that way. Hey, which so, one you use, Mark Thompson? Exactly. So uh, we will. Some of that heckler uh, stuff. Oh, here's here's a little bit of it from last night. We'll do more next hour. But go ahead. Deserve the freedom to be safe. And America is safer today than when I took office. Year before I took office, murder rates went up 30 percent. 30 percent they went up. The biggest increase in history. It was then. Americans deserve. I don't know who that guy was. Maybe he's been identified. I don't think so. I haven't seen anything on his actual identity. Not that it matters, but. Um, it matters only in whether or not he was a lawmaker, and he was also being heckled by lawmakers like Marjorie Taylor Greene. So we'll talk more about that in the second hour with Michael Short. The I do want to mention one thing. Michael Shore and uh, Michael Snyder, the second uh, guest in the second hour, the Culture Blaster, they came in last night, and we recorded them because I have to go do KFI radio. Normally, I wouldn't we would still keep the show live, but Kim, as you can see, is on the phone. Her internet is down. So with no other option, we recorded them last night. So just to uh, let you know ahead of time in the interest of a full disclosure, but we still go over all the same material. Um, and we noted again uh, during that conversation. I, I was impressed with them. I really was. Now you can, uh, and I know right-wing media is saying, oh, he was shouting the whole time. I actually didn't think he was shouting. I thought he was forceful. He was somewhere between you know, shouting and being emphatic, you know, somewhere in there. But I thought he, I thought he was quite, quite impressive. And he reviewed the economic flourish that's been going on under his administration. He reviewed a lot of his accomplishments, which is what State of the Union uh, messages do. It was very uh, campaign oriented. And again, I, I wasn't surprised by that. The thing that was surprising to me only because I think I've taken in so much of this, so, oh, you know, Biden is feeble and weak, is that he just displayed none of that, absolutely none of that last night. Uh, he was on fire, you know. So uh, more on that, and uh, we'll get into a conversation with Michael Shore about that. The other thing I just wanted to mention, and we... We'll show some of this next hour, although we didn't get the clip that I, you know, it, we, we end up with a kind of a questionable clip because it mentions, uh, you know, stuff that get, will get us demonetized. <laughs> but uh, this Katie Britt from Alabama who did the GOP response, she just seemed like it was a bad community theater production, you know, from, a community, from a community that's really small and couldn't find any real actors. Yeah, I mean, it was... If it was an audition, they wouldn't even let her go again. They would just go, thank yeah. you. We'll keep your stuff. <laughs> right. We'll keep your stuff on file. She was so over the top, on the verge of tears the whole time, then breaking into a smile. It was so studied. It was like a bad TikTok video. And maybe this is the and, and by the way, I would I would fry a Democrat or Republican for the kind of performance that she offered last night it's uh it was it's brutal you know the word the word is cringe she was cringe she was it, it was and and of course she's trying to represent the you know kitchen table issue and that's why she goes from her own kitchen last night in the response but i don't know that any of this makes a big difference but it was worth noting she was utterly um I disliked her speech and her breathy manner. You are correct. Bad theater, Rebecca says. Yeah, it was really weak. So um, 
I uh, kind of it was a nice kitchen though. Yes. <laughs> Who said that? She was totally cringeworthy. Says Angela. Yeah. Whoever says a nice kitchen, is, uh, John. Very well done. Um, the uh, you did feel, by the way, like she was close to being like a pitch person. Like she would have could have easily turned that into. But what I've found chops my onions better than any other instrument in my kitchen is this. The new Cuisinart 400. If she had done that, it would oh, have been God. completely consistent with how inauthentic her entire presentation was. Uh, PG&E is going to hike rates again. Again? Uh, can you, again. And they just did it. Like, I don't know what, two months ago? And when the CPUC approved that one, there was already this other rate increase proposal on the table. And they just last night put it through and i feel so angry about it yeah this by the way if you're just joining us is a show that came from the radio in the bay area and uh moved to youtube and now obviously our audience extends well beyond that but we really keep a strong strong connection to the bay area and pg e is the company that handles electricity and, and gas for the bay area and northern california and so uh, they are essentially saying, and this is something that applies to everybody everywhere in California, because this is the hook on which they can hang a lot of these rate increases. They're saying they need the money for what, Kim? They're saying it for, I believe. They need to make safety upgrades and underground yes. power lines. Right. To well, keep the fire increases? danger down. Exactly. How many, how many increases do you need all, all at once? I mean, and, and why didn't you over time maintain your system so that you didn't have to gouge us all at once and if you really need the money so badly to pay for the wildfire mitigation then maybe you guys shouldn't take bonuses big fat bonuses and ride around on private jets to your meetings how about that that's a very good point caller thank you i also want to say that the uh <laughs> uh the average hike the the, the average the average bill, I think, um, went up $38 a month per customer on January 1st, this past January 1st, okay? So now they want another rate increase. And this is the big thing I would say to you. You'll remember, they posted a 25% uh, increase in profits last year. So this utility that reported a 25% increase in profits last year, just had a rate increase on January 1st of this year. Now they want another increase, and they're getting the green light for that increase. It seems like a tortured situation. And again, consumers without any options will uh, pay that price, literally. The Mark Thompson Show. Also wanted to... I've got so many stories here, Albert. I don't know how to get through all of that. I have so much I want to share with you. I mean, we have a caller here instead of a, a newswoman and Kim, so we have a couple more minutes to... Uh, no, that's right. That's good. ...to do some time for, for some of these stories. No bonuses for um, pg and &E, indeed. The other thing I wanted to mention to you, and it's really uh, important, I think, is the meeting that is going on at Mar-a-Lago. Do you have Chunk of Trump ready to go, Albert? I am. Could you get it? Could you get it ready for me, please, sir? I am ready, yes. All right. Let's uh, do it. This is a Chunk of Trump. Open wide. Ready? Here comes your Chunk of Trump. It's my favorite food. With your first bite, here's Mark Thompson. I have a feeling it's going to be beautiful. There is nothing Donald Trump loves more Besides some of his loves and side pieces that we've seen along the very many years we've been following him, there's nothing he likes more than a strongman, Donald Trump. And Viktor Orban is someone he's mentioned in speeches. It's someone he's entertained at the White House when he was president. And now, today, he is welcoming Viktor Orban to Mar-a-Lago. Now, Viktor Orban is the Prime Minister of Hungary. Hungary is a great example, and I've mentioned this to you for a while. 
did this on a radio and we're, we'll touch on it here. It's a great example of how you can have authoritarian creep. That is to say, you don't come in as Victor Orban with jackbooted thugs that round up your opponents. You come in with a kind of slow creep over the courts, over media, over finance, over business. This is the kind of authoritarianism that Viktor Orban has created in Hungary. And this is the kind of authoritarianism that is really perfect for America. So you're going to see, and you saw it already with Donald Trump, and it's been laid out in that 2025 document with their plans essentially to reshape American government, the politicization of everything. I mean, again, business, press, civil servants fired. You saw a bunch of that under the Trump administration. So Viktor Orban is the kind of strong man that changes the nature of the justice system by appointing all of these judges who are loyalists to him. And then slowly eases out his opposition, again, not by throwing them out of windows or poisoning them, but by intimidating them and reducing their media footprint. That's what's going on in Hungary. He had risen to power with the same kind of far-right populism that Trump speaks all the time. The system has let you down. This is the problem. Immigration, he said, was the problem in Hungary. Hungary doesn't have an immigration problem. You know, you can argue that America has an immigration issue. Understaffed, undermanned, at the border, overrun in places. You can argue that and, I think, defend that argument. In Hungary, you couldn't. They didn't have that issue. But Orban and those around him, they sold that media message to the public. And it was a distraction. And Orban rose to power. And now, you can't get him out of power. He is Hungary's leader. Ad infinitum. This is the kind of strongman and soft power I mean it in a different way. Usually when we talk about soft power, we talk about the power of, of money. For example, when the U.S. is so connected to another nation that we essentially can impose our will through soft power, right? Through the power of our trade, through the power of our money. But this is a, kind of, a, a different kind of soft power. It's a creep. It is a, an authoritarian creep. And so when you're looking at a strategy and model of authoritarianism and fascism that could rise in America, you're looking at a Viktor Orban Hungarian style authoritarianism. He is meeting with Trump at Mar-a-Lago. You remember he pushed back, Hungary did, he was one of the nations that pushed back against Sweden and against sort of the increasing footprint of NATO. And he is one of those people who, let's just say, he shares Trump's problems with aid to Ukraine. Trump said he's got a problem with aid to Ukraine. So does Orban. So you begin to see the kind of alliances geopolitically in Orban that Trump has. But more than anything, it's that... Orban is the same kind of leader that Trump would likely be, singing the populism song while slowly increasing his power and his money. Orban took over businesses there. I mean, these businesses that used to be, it was a free market there. It was a democracy. And Orban essentially infested everything with his fascism and authoritarianism. Watch that space, because if Trump gets back in, that is what we will be looking at in America. And it happens with almost a sleight of hand. So. The Mark Thompson Show. That's your chunk of Trump. 
That's it for this edition. Well, I really enjoyed it. But make sure to join us again next time. I think you might want to listen. There's nothing wrong with listening. For another chunk of Trump. Don't mean to be too heavy with you, but that is, I think it's super important. Um, the FDA is recalling cinnamon brands tainted by lead. Didn't we have this story before, Kim? They've tested, so I thought there was a warning about, oh, there was a warning about specific um, cinnamon brands, I think, from one of the stores that carried them. It was not a general recall, but now the FDA is urging the recall of all of these brands that have hundreds of children poisoned by the spice in applesauce, 75 types of cinnamon tested. It's yeah. found lead in cinnamon brands sold at some dollar stores and other markets. They conducted tests across the country after at least 460 children were sickened last year by illnesses linked to applesauce pouches. These products have been contaminated with high levels of lead from cinnamon processed in Ecuador. The FDA's, the FDA's latest tests show lower levels, two to three parts a million in cinnamon, in contrast to last year, that was 2,200 to 5,100 parts per million. So, uh, cinnamon on the recall. I used to love to drench toast and butter and cinnamon when I was a kid. Supposed to be good for diabetes, says Judy. It lowers your blood sugar. Well, it does that while also making your kids. What does it do? Mentally, essentially diminishes them mentally, doesn't it? Developmentally, I think. That's one of the big, um, the big things that lead does when you take it in. Apples gamble on... Killers of the Flower Moon, Napoleon, and the movie Argyle. Was it worth it? How much did they spend on Killers of the Flower Moon, Napoleon, and Argyle? Apple. They've got deep pockets and big Hollywood ambitions. They spent $700 million on those projects. What? They have 13 shots to take home an Oscar on Sunday. Killers of the Flower Moon and Napoleon. 10 and 3 nominations respectively. That could give them the second biggest haul among major studios. Netflix, 18, and Universal and Searchlight also in the hunt. But again, $700 million. But listen to what they say. They say it was worth it. That is to say, worth it from a bottom line standpoint. So Scorsese did Killers, cost $215 million. Apple spent $700 million to make and market just three films, Killers, Napoleon, and Argyle. They've earned $466 million worldwide at the box office. Napoleon was the top box office film at $221 million. Killers at $157 and Argyle $88. But a studio source at Apple says both films are profitable, profitable, Killers and Napoleon. They have a lot of ancillary revenue streams, they say, both ranked among the top 10 grossing films of the past year. And on the App Store, Killers holding the top spot for four weeks. It's too early, they say, to tell how Napoleon is faring on Apple TV. It debuted March 1st, but Killers is off to a strong start. Most viewed film on the platform in the first 45 days of release. It's ins- to me, it's insane you could spend that kind of money and somehow recover and be in the black. But that's what's happening. So as you watch the Oscars this Sunday, there is that. And if you're really into the Oscars, Michael Snyder, the Culture Blaster, is here in the second hour. He will and- handicap a little bit of what's going on with the Oscars as well as recommend some new films that are out and streaming television as well. So, and Phineas, I don't know if he's in the uh, chat today, but Phineas recommended that Michael Snyder uh, see a streamer that he really likes, a TV show, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And he did, and he reviews it today. So 
All of that still to come. So, uh, the Mark Thompson Show. Albert, uh, we haven't mentioned Mark's madness. Um, let me just ask you, sir. You are the commish. Uh, for those just joining us, Mark's Madness is what we do every March. It's our answer to Mark's Madness. And what I would ask you to do is embrace this man who you see right of your screen. He is the commish. And he is the commissioner of Mark's Madness. He has put together the brackets. He's put together the matchups. What is the very latest, sir? You have the video up there explaining things. Kamish, it is up to you with the contest starting next Wednesday to fill us in, please. Yeah, so um, I've seen a good amount of people already join the link. Again, the explainer video is, is live, so you can just go on our YouTube channel Mark Tom, at The Mark Thompson Show and find it and learn how to join. If you've already previously been uh, a participant, once you just log into officepoolstop.com, which I'll just add here, and you will be able to see everything. So it's very straightforward if you've done it before. If you've not, I suggest going to that video. And here we have the bracket, which is uh, which is exciting. I see a lot of people talking about their favorite drops, in including in the description of that video of the explainer. So we'll see if they make it far this year. Yeah, yeah. the uh, oh, now I'm hearing uh, uh, there's some echo or something. I don't know if that's Kim. We may have to. Yeah, I think, Kim, you might have to turn your volume down on your phone. Yeah, we've got Kim, if you're just joining us, is uh, her internet went out. I mean, her internet is down. It was planned to be down and it's down. And so, um, she's joining us from, um, a car, which is, uh, very much like the old school radio show we came from. That's why we call her for the day. Caller. We don't call her Kim. We call her caller. <laughs> um, so I, I, by the way, I never used that term when we were on the air. I never said, uh, caller, uh, your point is well taken, but I never, I always like to call people by their name. But um, but I do like That's where the big shout outs came from from the from the six five zero. Oh yeah, big shout outs! I forgot we we used to do the big, big shout outs. Big shout outs. The this would be shout out from the to the seven zero seven baby. Yeah, shout yeah. out to the seven zero seven. Big yeah. shout out. Big shout out. Uh, the uh, the the term caller as you talk to somebody sort of diminishes them a little bit. I always felt like that talk show hosts use that to diminish the person calling in. Maybe they don't do it deliberately, but it always felt that way. That's why I never used it. I just don't like it. I like to call people by their name. Anyway, back to what we're talking about. This is Mark's Madness. Word from the Lord and Larry King scene. That is one of the first round showdowns that I am looking forward to. This is a word from the Lord, mm -hmm. and he's not happy. Yeah, against What uh, can you tell us about the scene? Oh, I think that's too close to call, man. I don't know. And it's very close, and we'll see. Um, I'm excited to see what's going to happen. There's a lot of new drops here, like George Santos. Here's a great one. I oh, feel like that's so good. Hey, Mark, it's George Santos here. Yeah, uh, seriously, WTF, now, who's, who's George is, Santos up against? Um, he's going against our, our, our oh, dear friend, Ron. Ron. Owen. Yeah, yeah. In fact, um, George Santos was at the uh, State of the Union last what night. What the hell is going on in the United States of America? Yeah, so that's Ron. Ron will go up against George Santos there, as you can see. So those two drops will play off against each other. All these drops play off against each other. They move on, the winner, to the next round. You'll vote in the chat, and you also vote in the... Most people watch the show after it's been on live. So you'll vote in the comments. You just indicate. Now, again, it doesn't start until Wednesday, but we want to kind of review what will likely happen um yeah george santos is new uh yes seriously wtf was a 21 seed that made it to the final four last year so uh, yeah it, it's been up to a number I, six seriously, what we'll the I, yeah, we'll I, I'm, oh, I, would, I was astounded that it, it uh, was seated seriously what the f i thought that would win when it when we first got the drop i thought it that one's gonna win in a walk away but it and we haven't didn't. mentioned it yet we have played it a few times but i think this is the prohibitive shit, shit, that is shit, i think shit, shit. i think we'll right uh, it's the odds on favor to win and i think we'll be getting to that one on uh thursday, mm. so, uh, thursday. sayonara sayonara sucker that is a good oh. one too i do enjoy that D uh, and kim will even just say sayonara sucker a lot we'll do it live i can do yeah it it's up against we'll do it live. it's up against we'll do it live that in the first round anyway so uh, you know how it works. Albert has explained how to sign up. 
His video is there. Look at Mark's Madness 2024. It's a brilliant video from the commissioner's office. And Kamish, nice job. And Albert, as the commissioner, will be checking in from Taiwan. He'll also join us for our meet and greet, which we'll be doing um, Thursday of next week, 6.30 to 8.30. It's a two-hour meetup, meet and greet, meetup. I don't know what you want to call it, but um, should be fine. I think we have two seats still open for that, so... Um, and last thing, uh, you have until next Wednesday to fill out your bracket. So next. Oh, that's Wednesday. right. You've got the whole weekend. You can meet with your friends, maybe call a neighborhood meeting, uh, go over the <laughs> brackets, um, play down all of the different drops. We have in the video I just mentioned there on YouTube, the one that's Mark's Madness 2024, all of the drops can be heard. We tell you what each drop is nicknamed or called in the brackets, and you can hear them all. So... There's plenty of time, and we encourage you to participate. So, The Mark Thompson Show. I'll get to Florida in a second. I want to mention that that Beverly Hills school district that was dealing with the eighth graders that put together the fake, it was an AI, or uh, was it AI, or it was just a, essentially it was a superimposed picture of a real student involved in, uh, in a sex act. So it was a sex act and they put a real student's picture there yeah, but it over wasn't the just sex Photoshop. act. It wasn't just Photoshop. It was like AI good stuff, right? Where it actually looked real. And they were dealing with how to handle these eighth graders who were involved in this. And they voted at a special meeting to the Beverly Hills Unified School District to approved stipulated agreements of expulsion with five students. The expelled students uh, were attending Beverly Vista Middle, Middle School under a stipulated agreement the students and their parents do not contest the punishment and no hearing will be held. The names of the students not released and the agreements are confidential. Typically, agreements like this specify how long a student is expelled and what the terms are for them to return, right? The five students who were the focus of the investigation were the ones, quote, most egregiously involved. Egregiously is a ding word. Feels like there was another ding word in there, but I don't remember what it was. Um, in any case, uh, it was pretty brutal what they did. And so this is pretty severe. These, This is the disciplinary action that you would kind of expect the fake nudes circulated briefly among students in late February last month. How the images were made have, hasn't been discussed, other than to say it did involve generative AI. So as Kim says, it was like really top drawer stuff. Anyway, that's the follow-up on that entire story. The Mark Thompson Show. It is, uh, I think, about that time. Albert, could you give me some sense of how Florida looks? You are the one who curates this segment as producer of this show. Can you give me an idea of what we will be uh, uh, experiencing? Albert, thank you. Um, <laughs> that's a great way to put it. Uh, we will be experiencing, it's pretty good. I, I, I feel like uh, we have enough, uh, well, I think we have a couple wildlife stories on there. A satanic temple, so I think that's a new one. So we can knock that off our bingo sheet. It looks good. It looks great. It's, we have I saw um, one story that I thought we'd done. Um, oh, I, I think it might be the... Yes, that's the one. Thank you. That, I, I, I thought... I have, no, I, I but I'll, I'll, I will... We're, we're both looking at the rundown right now. I do have this story that you, uh, somebody... You sent me this one, actually, so we'll... Uh, yeah. Include. We're all on alert all the time for Albert on Florida. And many of you in the audience, thank you. You send us various materials that might work well in Florida. Sometimes they're too heavy, sometimes they're whatever. But we love getting your content. And I'll read your stuff whenever you want to send it. So you can, it can be about anything. Uh, the Mark Thompson Show at gmail.com is my address. And 